Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. Today we're going to take a look at automatic storage, and we're going to start with a tutorial for an item filter circuit. We're going to start by placing an output chest and a hopper running into it, and then we're going to build the most basic item filter. This is not the filter we're going to be using for the rest of the video, but it is probably the smallest item filter we can make, the fewest number of ingredients to create a functional standalone item filter. First of all, behind this hopper we need to dig a three block long hole with one space dug out between these two blocks. That's where we're going to place a bunch of stone just as a temporary building block to run redstone components on. We're going to dig out the space underneath this hopper and we're going to place a redstone torch attached to that stone block. Then we're going to put a redstone repeater in this space here. We're going to hold shift so we can cover that over with another stone block place another stone block there and we're going to place a comparator facing this way with two pieces of redstone dust running out of it like so. Then we're going to take a second hopper and holding shift once again we're going to place that so it faces in towards the comparator. Then when we place a few blocks into the hopper here you'll notice the comparator lights up, this redstone dust starts fizzing and none of the items are leaving the hopper quite yet. In order to set up this item filter, we're going to make sure that it has 21 items to it, using these blocks of stone as an example. And we're going to use those 21 items to fill the last four spaces in the hopper, with one more added to one of these stacks. Then, whenever we place some items in the first slot, this is the item that we want this circuit to filter out. Whether the items are being carried over the top by a stream of water, or if they're going to be carried over by additional hoppers that are feeding along in a chain, this filter is going to extract any spruce planks that we put in here, and is always going to leave one in the first slot of the filter. That way, any time any items come over, it will take out the spruce planks and leave any other items to continue on down the chain. You will also find that one item gets trapped in this hopper, but the remainder of the items will go into the chest. We got a bit of dirt there from when I was experimenting with this. So for those of you who aren't quite redstone savvy yet, I will explain a bit more about what's going on here. This comparator is detecting the contents of this hopper at all times. It's going to be telling you how many items are in this hopper and outputting that in the form of a redstone signal. Comparators will detect how full a container is. So in this case, this container is not very full. It hasn't got to the maximum capacity of items and is only outputting a very weak redstone signal strength. It's only outputting a strength of one here. In order to activate the circuit, it has to contain enough items that the redstone signal strength increases to two, activating this redstone dust, which in turn will activate this repeater since it's checking for power in that block, and the repeater turns off this redstone torch. The redstone torch being on locks this hopper, meaning no more items can travel through it. So when we add some more contents to this hopper and the circuit activates, this redstone torch switches off, allowing items to flow through this hopper and into the storage chest. Now one very important thing to note is that the hopper above is facing in towards this comparator and not downwards into that hopper. This is because hoppers have push and pull functionality. When they are not locked by a redstone power source, they will attempt to pull items in from any containers above them, including other hoppers. But whichever way the output of a hopper is facing, it will also try to push items in that direction. So when setting up your item filters, it's important to make sure that the hopper is facing outwards towards either the redstone circuit or perhaps towards the chest, but not down into the hopper below it. Hopefully that made sense. And now we're going to try something else. We're going to make a second item filter circuit next to this one. And this will really demonstrate why we're not going to be using this particular design of item filter. So here we go. I've created a second item filter identical to the first one. It's got all of those items in the hopper already, so the filter items are set up, and we just need to add in whatever type of material we want this slice of the filter to filter out. So we've got the spruce planks on this side, it makes sense that we'll have some oak planks on this side. You'll notice at the back here, the redstone dust connects, because the dust can't be told whether or not you want it to maintain an individual line, or if you want it to connect up as though it's all one big circuit, it will always connect to the dust next door. And this becomes a problem for item filter circuits, because you'll notice the contents of this filter here are going to be affected by whatever this redstone dust does, because once this reaches a certain level of power, it's going to power the neighboring circuit 
as well. Let's put in the 32 oak planks that I brought with me, and you'll notice underneath there both of these redstone torches switched off. The other one is now switched back on, but you'll notice that in that time, our filter circuit on the right hand side here that was filtering spruce planks has broken. While this filter has now successfully filtered all of the oak planks down into this chest, our spruce filter has let through a bunch of the stone blocks and now has two empty slots in this top hopper. And you can imagine that if we had a chain of hoppers or a water stream transferring items over the top of this, this hopper would now be able to pick up anything and it would not filter out specific items like we need it to. That is all because this redstone dust at the back here connects and once the comparator reaches a certain signal strength, it's going to activate the neighboring circuit which will deactivate that redstone torch and drain any of the contents of this hopper regardless of whether or not you want it to. And that is why we're not going to be using this item filter design and we're going to be very specific about the items we add to our next item filter. For this filter, we're going to dig a trench behind here and I'm going to leave this side open so you can see what's going on. We're going to make sure we do this item filter over here first. We're going to add two blocks here and here. We're going to make sure there's a redstone torch attached to this one and we're going to add a redstone repeater facing into that one. We're going to add three blocks of stone along the top here. We're going to add three redstone dust this time. Our comparator is going to be facing in towards the redstone dust as before, and as before, our hopper is going to be attached to the comparator. This time, the redstone torch underneath here is not powering under the hopper, it's powering under this block. But that means the block becomes a redstone power source which does lock this hopper. So the hopper that's directing stuff into the chest is currently locked, and if we start adding items into the hopper above, the comparator lights up, and these items freeze in place. At this point, we're going to need more items to go in this first slot. So I brought a stack of spruce logs for this example. We're gonna put those in there and we're only going to leave four other blocks here in the hopper. So we're going to leave four blocks of stone in this case for this example, but we're gonna to want to swap out the stone for something less generic later because you can imagine that any stone that flows over the top of this is also going to be picked up by the hopper. I'll teach you a trick to dealing with that a little bit later. But for now, you'll see that 41 logs have been held in this hopper. There's one log below, so only 22 have made it to the chest. And you might be wondering, why not just add 40 more items to this filter so that we only end up with one more log left in that first slot and all of the rest of the logs end up in the chest. And once again, that has to do with what happens when you build these circuits side by side. So I built another identical filter circuit on this side, and this one we're going to put in some spruce planks in that first slot. You'll notice that's not produced a high enough signal strength to activate either of these two circuits yet, because this only has four filler items here in the filter, so that's not going to allow any of the other items through yet. In fact, even if I break down eight more spruce logs so that we have another 32 planks, I can put a full stack of items in there, and that only produces a strong enough signal strength to activate this piece of redstone dust here, not the circuit on the other side. So anytime you add a full stack of items, the maximum amount of items that can go into one of these filters with only four filler items in there, it's not going to affect any circuits that are built directly to either side. In the meantime though, this circuit here with all of these items can produce a higher comparator signal strength than the circuit next door. So if I put close to a full stack of logs in here, we can actually observe the items draining out of the left-hand filter. Once again, it's going to do that until the neighboring comparator signal strength decreases enough, by which time there are only six planks left in the filter. And let's say another stack of wood makes its way into the system. Once again, this item filter is going to completely break. It's going to leave that open to receive any items that go through the system. So any planks, any logs, Logs, they're all going to end up in this chest. So that's why when we're designing these item filters, we always want to leave four filler items in here and 41 items in the first slot, because that's the only way to guarantee that the system is protected against overflow. Even if you're dripping in a couple of items at a time, you're not putting full stacks into this system, let's imagine that we fill up this entire chest of spruce locks. We've done a lot of tree chopping and that ends up filling up the hopper behind this as well. Items can no longer exit this hopper. They can no longer be pulled out because 
even when the system fills up and this comparator activates, there's nowhere else for them to go. So if a stack of spruce logs was permanently sitting in this hopper, that would be permanently activating the circuits to either side and draining the neighboring filters of their contents. And that's why you will hear people describing this type of item filter as having overflow protection. If the system begins to overflow with items, it prevents it from breaking the item filters to either side. This item filter design was popularized by Impulse SV. I consider it the gold standard of item filters, and it's what we're going to be using for the bulk storage building that we're going to construct. Naturally, if you've got 41 items sitting in your item filters, actually 42 if you count the hopper below this, you're not going to want to use this for precious resources unless you have a vast quantity of them. You don't want to leave 41 diamonds sitting around in a hopper, which is why we're going to be using these item filters for bulk storage. We're going to be storing stuff like logs and wooden items and stone and dirt and the kind of stuff that you get tons of when you have a long-term Minecraft world. We're going to be setting up a large long-term storage building that's going to contain filters for a lot of different blocks. Before we move on to that though, I think I should probably explain why I'm doing this. And it's really because I've outgrown the storage here in my basement. I gather wood on a fairly regular basis so I can have it for big projects like the blacksmith's house that we just built. And I think it's high time that we get some storage that's going to hold more than a few stacks of these different materials. For a start, I've already had to create an overflow chest here for all of the spruce and mangrove I thought I was going to need for that house before I decided to modify the roof a little bit. We've also got all of these nether blocks lying around in kind of unrelated barrels and chests. I have so much netherrack, I don't really quite know what to do with it all. There's various chests in here that people have, perhaps rightly pointed out, are miscategorized from my initial labeling system. These aren't exactly stone blocks, they're all dirt and sand and that kind of stuff. And we'll need to be gathering some supplies like that in large quantities. So I think we're going to need a large long-term storage system and it's better to build that sooner rather than later. Especially since we have all of this iron that I've been smelting from my smeltery. We've got a whole bunch more from the huge iron vein. It's high time we put all of that iron to good use and we'll need a lot of it to craft a lot of hoppers for this storage system. Naturally, we will also need a lot of comparators and repeaters. So this is the point at which we will definitely have to have gone to the nether if we want to set up any kind of automatic storage because you'll need quartz in pretty large supplies. Stone is also going to be necessary in large quantities since you need that to craft both comparators and repeaters. So it's worth doing a bit of mining in order to prepare yourself for a large scale build like this. Now before we do any building, before we do any of the redstone setup, I'm actually going to flatten out this area slightly since it makes sense to build all of these item filters on a flat section of ground. But for now I think it makes sense to have at least five blocks of distance between our item filters so we have a nice corridor to walk down with the item filters arranged to either side. In fact, let's make that seven blocks wide just to make sure I have enough room on either side to leave some sort of label for what each of the chests contain. And this could be a sign or an item frame, but that many signs and item frames is going to be a lot to look at. And so instead, I think what we're going to do is something I've done in previous seasons of Survival Guide and other storage systems that I've built, is to label each of these with the block they are going to be filtering embedded in the floor here so you can easily see what it is. In this case, we're going to start with all of the wood types. I think that's the most sensible thing to want to store in bulk aside from stone, cobblestone and dirt. And of course, the wild thing about this is that there are now nine different types of wood that can be obtained in the overworld. And that doesn't even count the warped hyphae and warped stem that you acquire from the nether. So we're looking at potentially nine or 11 item filters just for the section where we're storing all the wood. One of the other decisions we have to make as we set all of this up is are the chests going to be aligned with the the floor here? Are they going to be effectively at waist height for the player? Do we want to embed them in the floor behind each of these blocks so that we have a little bit more vertical room to store some of these chests? And of course we could end up with two double chests with a second hopper feeding into the lower of the two chests. That way all of the resources will drain down into this lower chest and we can grab what we want from the chests aligned with the floor. In my case I think I am going to put each of these chests on the surface instead of embedded in the floor but we are going to do the double chest thing where we're going to have a a second chest over the top here that's feeding the items down into the main chest. And naturally this is going to increase the amount of hoppers we will need since we'll need an extra hopper just to make sure all of the items get from these top chests into the main storage. But 
Honestly, I think that's going to be a good thing, because in the later stages of my worlds, I prefer to have at least a double chest of each wood type available for larger projects, so I think it makes a lot of sense to have long-term bulk storage be a couple of double chests minimum. Naturally, what this means is that this chest here is the one that we're going to be setting up the item filter originally pointing into, and we're trusting that whatever items get filtered are going to end up in these lower chests and nothing else is going to creep on through. Now we have to decide which block we're going to use for the supporting blocks for all of the redstone we need to construct behind this item filter. And in this case, I'm quite tempted to just go with a standard wood type, considering that every time we break down a log, we get four planks. It's a lot cheaper to use than something like stone would be. So at this point, we can start setting up the circuits for the item filters. We're not going to fill the hoppers with items just yet, but this one down the end is going to be the one that filters the bamboo. If you're building these in bulk, the main thing I recommend doing is building them sort of from the ground up so that you build a layer here with all of the redstone repeaters on, making sure that we're placing those on some sort of unusual solid block. That way, if we decorate this area, we're going to end up finding those and not breaking them accidentally thinking they're a natural part of the environment and thus breaking some of our redstone circuits. But we're going to place all of these planks here so that we can place all of the redstone torches before we put the blocks on top and that's going to make sure that we don't have to crawl through this awkwardly placing redstone torches later. For now though that should be enough to get the rest of the filters built. We place the comparators in a row facing outwards like so and we simply fill the rest of this up with redstone dust and this is all going to connect but if we build our item filters properly, we're not going to have to worry about any of it powering the filters to either side. Last of all, our row of hoppers goes in, and then we're going to have a row of hoppers going across the top here as well, because the items will need to be fed in somehow. In future, we'll do an item storage system that includes water streams to do that, but the setup for that is a little bit more complicated. So for today, we're just going to be relying on the mechanism of hoppers. And we're going to leave one chest at the end here with a bunch of hoppers pushing downwards without any item filter attached to it and this is going to be our overflow chest for any items which do not match the items we're trying to filter so if we end up putting stone or anything else in here once we've set up the filters for all of the wood the stone and other items are all going to make their way into this chest we'll put a row of hoppers going in towards that and remember that each of the hoppers below these even though they are filtered they are not locked and they're going to be pulling items out of anything that travels through this hopper chain. Last of all, of course, we'll need to put a hopper here facing into that. And on top of that, we'll need to put an input chest. So when you're designing a storage system, it's always quite important to make sure you have a means of accessing this input chest. And that's an additional challenge for these buildings, really. Find some way of incorporating that into the design, whether there's just a simple staircase up to it, or if you reach up to it from the ground, or even if this entire storage system is embedded in the ground so that the input chest is simply on a level with the floor outside. Either way, we are now ready to start setting up our item filters, and here is where I'll show you a trick that I promised to show you a little bit earlier in the video. We are going to rename an item that we are going to use for the filter material for our system. In fact, I'm going to name it filter material. I'm using netherrack here because it's cheap and I don't use it for building with very often, so I'm unlikely to want to use that, and I can always go to the nether very easily and get more. It's a very quick block to mine. And that's what we going to place in the last four slots of each of these hoppers. Remember, the first slot needs to be taken up with the material because that is the slot that will drain first when the hopper is pulling or pushing items. Then I'm going to drop off all of the redstone components and various bits and pieces I have in my inventory. We're going to leave the filter material in there so it doesn't accidentally end up making its way through the system. And I'm going to grab a stack of each type of wood, if I've got a stack. In terms of bamboo, I don't think I have that much. But we'll bring a stack of oak, birch, spruce, jungle, mangrove, dark oak, and we've got a little bit of acacia left, but not much. There might also be some here in the chest in the blacksmith's house. Yes, there's some more acacia in there, which once again is highlighting the reason I need to make one of these storage systems. And so we're going to go through these filters from the front and systematically add the type of wood that we're going to be filtering. And I tend to add these in terms of the order they were added to Minecraft. So oak and birch first, followed by spruce and jungle, then dark oak and acacia, then mangrove and 
cherry and bamboo. You'll notice that each time we add a stack of logs into one of these filters, it drains down until there are 41 left. Unless in the case of this cherry and bamboo, and also I believe in the case of the acacia, we don't have a full stack yet, so the filter isn't going to be going anywhere. But now with each of these filters primed to receive the correct type of material, there should be 22 logs in each of the chests where we were able to put a full stack, we can start putting items into this input chest here. So let me go and grab all of the wood logs that I've left in other places. I'm probably going to leave a little bit of each type of wood down here in the basement, mostly because out of force of habit, I'm probably going to come to this storage system every so often to pick up what I need. But now I have a few different stacks of logs that I can put into the input chest, and we're going to throw some other items in here as well. So let's throw in the oak logs to start with. I'm going to put some stone in here just to make sure the system is filtering items correctly, and then we'll put in the other types of logs as well. Then as the items drain out, we're just going to add a bunch more. We'll throw in in the coal and the ender chest and like just give a bunch of junk into the system and make sure that it's working as intended. Now each of those items is passing through this top row of hoppers one by one and the item filters should now be pulling out any items that are relevant to their specific filter. Right now the mangrove is starting to filter on through and you'll notice that there are no other different types of wood in any of these chests so far. The stone has already made its way down here into the overflow chest because it wasn't recognized by any of the filters and a bit more of that should be going through the system right now so we can watch that coming in on the other side yep that's going through what's next on the list so we can keep an eye for it that is spruce and after a second or two, yep, the spruce is all starting to filter down into here as well. So this row of chests is now automatically sorting any input from a single chest and filtering out all of the wood types to be stored in these individual double chests. And I did mention that there was a reason I'm not putting the filter material through this as part of the test as well. And that is because if it starts to stack up, in these item filters because naturally the hopper above will pull them down and add them to the stacks that are in here. Sooner or later that's going to add up to the overflow protection problem that we talked about earlier and we're going to end up with one of these filters breaking. Of course the reason we renamed it is so that it forms a different stack to any other piece of netherrack. So for example if I were to go and grab a bunch of netherrack out of my storage in here, if these blocks of netherrack have not been renamed they are perfectly safe to put through the system and we should find that those eventually make their way into the overflow chest down here at the end along with all of the stone. If you've renamed items they will only stack with other items that have exactly the same name. The main thing to avoid here is using items that do not stack, for example tools, because they will output a higher redstone signal strength because they are filling up an entire stack of items, and using those could cause your filters to break. The comparators are not measuring the raw amount of items that are in a hopper, they are measuring the capacity of the hopper, and a single slot taken up by a non-stackable item counts effectively like 64 normal items. Likewise, you don't want to set up your filters with items that stack to anything less than 64, so for example eggs or signs that only stack to 16. Using those as filter material, you risk the same problem that you have with the overflow of additional items being put in here. The comparator is going to be producing a higher signal strength, making it unreliable as an item filter. But now this chest is empty of all of the resources we put in there, and we can check each of these chests, and we'll find that every single log that we put in here has been filtered into the correct category. We ended up with a bit of extra acacia because of my demonstration with the, the tool earlier, and we have a little bit of cherry. We don't have any bamboo yet because we don't have enough bamboo to put through the system, and down here at the end are all of the blocks that weren't filtered in any of these nine filters. So we've got the stone, the netherrack, the coal, my ender chests, and chests are all in there, and nothing else has been stuck in the hoppers. It's all been put through the system perfectly. So this is the beginning of our long-term bulk storage. We now have a lot more decisions to make. What other items are we going to be getting in large enough quantities that we will want to store them this way? And how are we going to lay out our storage rooms so that those can be most accessible? I like to put wood relatively close to the front of the storage build just so that we can have wood nice and easily accessible as soon as you walk through the door. So opposite that I will probably put regularly used blocks like stone, cobblestone, the kind of stuff that is not just a building resource, it's also a crafting resource. Do we put the warped and crimson stem here next to the overworld wood types so that all of the stuff that produces planks can end up in the same place. These are all decisions that we have to make. And of course, once we've set up all of these item filters, we need to figure out what this place is going to look like. We need to come up with some sort of building that all of this is going to be housed in. 
You'll often find that people prefer to build these sorts of things underground, where all you need to do is decorate the interior and not the exterior of something. But I really prefer to build stuff like this on the surface because it gives you an opportunity when you view this area later to see everything you have built in this area without having to go underground to take a look at half of it. Anyway, now that you've seen the setup for these item filters, I'm going to go ahead and build a bunch more of them because we're going to have some stone and other materials here on the opposite side of my storage room and we are going to hopefully figure out what other categories of items we want to filter. So you could stick to just auto-sorting the wood. You could stick to having a small-scale automatic sorting system if that meets your needs. But my needs are a little bigger, and they're even bigger than you see here because I've completed the item filters on the opposite side, we've got a bunch of the different stone types represented here and plans for a few more here and there, but then I turned a corner, literally and metaphorically, because I was doing some planning in my creative test world to try to figure out what categories of items I wanted to do automatic sorting with, and it turned out there are quite a lot, and I didn't really want to leave any out arbitrarily, so what I've ended up with is a kind of plus shape design for a building. And I, don't, I haven't designed the building yet, but I know this is what the layout is going to be. There are going to be four wings, and maybe we'll be able to enter by all four sides. But in this case, the main entrance here is going to be where the more natural and like earlier game blocks are. And then as you turn to the right on this side, you're going to have more blocks from the natural world, everything from dirt and grass and moss and that kind of stuff, through to sand, terracotta, the stuff that we're getting from deserts and badlands biomes. On the opposite side over there, facing towards the nether portal, we're going to have blocks from other dimensions, the nether and the end when we eventually get there included. And then further in that direction as we enter the hill, because yes, we are going to have a wing of this inside the hill buried in the ground or perhaps sticking out from the ground, that's where all of the precious resources are going to go, all of the stuff that we mine out of the earth. So thematically, each of these kind of works in their own way. And over here in a creative flat world where I've been testing some of the stuff, making sure the honeycomb farm design I used still works and that kind of thing, I have come up with the categories, roughly speaking. Anywhere you see these tinted glass blocks, that's kind of a placeholder, an empty slot, something that we might leave a little bit of space in the system either to add stuff later on or for future blocks that might arrive in future updates that we haven't really been able to talk about yet. So we have a bunch of the stone types as you saw. The wood types kind of end there for now because I decided to leave the nether stem and you know hyphae and, and those warped and crimson materials over with the nether stuff. So instead, in case we get any trees in future or in case I want to leave some manually sorted storage for leaves and other bits and pieces, that's all going to be available to us in this section here. But I'm adding prismarine and the blocks that you can get from ocean monuments on this side next to the stone types since they are technically naturally generated and they're just part of a an overworld structure that has a unique block palette. Then the natural world blocks are starting with moss and dirt and the dirt variants, mycelium from mushroom islands, and then we get into stuff like gravel, mud and packed mud. Mud obviously is related to clay, and then clay can become bricks or terracotta. And then we have red sand since terracotta and the mesa are related. And then normal sand and sandstone are obviously going to be gathered in bulk as well. On the opposite side here, I wasn't quite sure what to do with this row since that's most of the blocks that we can find from the natural world that we'd want to acquire in bulk. We obviously need places for glass and wool and some of the other blocks that can be dyed 16 different colours, but naturally, even though we have 16 blocks available on each row here, we're not going to want an individual chest for each of them. So I decided we'd put glass in one, wool in another, maybe even store some tinted glass or maybe just have that be overflow storage for any of the wool and glass. And then we would do a an individual manually sorted chest for concrete powder, concrete and glazed terracotta. Some of these blocks we haven't even talked about in the series yet, don't worry about it, we'll get to them later. With a bit of a gap either side, I figured that there would also be room here for manually sorted workstations like crafting tables and furnaces, but also the villager workstations, maybe some functional blocks like scaffolding, that kind of thing. And of course, the natural world also deserves to have a spot for snow and ice. I put some packed ice here so that we can light the area up because normal ice melts under certain light levels, so we don't want the entire thing to turn into a water source and flood. 
And likewise, there is a bit more room here for blocks from the natural world. If we wanted to have, you know, muddy mangrove roots or something represented here, if we got a large amount of those, then we could always use a few spare slots for that. Now, moving on to the nether and the end, there's obviously a little bit of stuff from ancient cities, the deep dark biome in the natural world as well. So that's represented there, and it feels kind of otherworldly like the stuff from the nether is. Natural nether terrain blocks around here, like the nylium from each of the forests, we've got soul soil and sand from the soul sand valleys, and then basalt, magma, and blackstone from the basalt delta. I also included bone blocks here, they're commonly found in soul sand valleys, and it felt like a nether related block to put down here. Then of course obsidian, crying obsidian, glowstone and ancient debris which i haven't even brought up in the series so far so sneak preview there on the opposite side we have the more structural blocks that you can get from the nether nether bricks obviously a key component of nether fortresses the warped and crimson stems quartz which can be manufactured from the nether although i expect we'll end up trading a lot of it from stonemasons which is why i've put the full quartz block and the quartz pillar here Blackstone and Blackstone variants are going to have lots of bricks and things because later on when we talk about Piglin Bastions we're going to be acquiring a lot of Blackstone variants from those. So it felt like we probably needed bulk storage for one and manually sorted storage for all of the variants. Shroom lights we're going to be getting lots of once we start farming the Warped and Crimson Hyphae. It also made for a really nice parallel with the magma block being opposite there. And then these blocks, which we haven't really had a chance to talk about much yet, but these are the two blocks from the Deep Dark that we can expect to be getting in large quantities. Or this could just be Skulk blocks, while this represents the other blocks in the Skulk family, the Shriekers, the Sensors, all of that stuff. Then when we eventually get to the end, we're going to need one for Endstone and one for Purple blocks, because we'll be acquiring both of those in large quantities, and while they have variants, we can store those separately. Finally, our row of precious items. Naturally, we're going to be acquiring lots of full blocks of these different items. We might end up just filtering individual diamonds instead of full diamond blocks but of course opposite that we want to collect some of the ore blocks as well so if we silk touch those they'll be available for us here and of course we will be silk touching every emerald ore block we find rather than fortuning those since it's kind of useless to do that opposite the copper and the raw blocks over here we have regular copper and we have fully oxidized copper with the reason being those are the two that you would want to store in bulk and if you want any of the middle stages of copper you just get the oxidized copper and you scrape it with an axe couple of times until it's the age you want, so there's really no need to store any of the in-between stages in bulk. Next to that we have blocks of netherite, very ambitious, but we'll get back to that in future episodes. Amethyst is of course represented here, and we also have slime blocks and honey blocks, since we'll be doing a lot with those later when we approach some more technical builds, and it makes sense to have them both represented here in our storage system. Opposite those, another set of blocks we haven't talked about, those are frog lights, and it might be potentially worth creating a subsection somewhere in here for lighting. Once we start working more with redstone lamps and if we end up getting lanterns in bulk, maybe we could even move the shroom lights, the glowstone and these frog light blocks, perhaps even the sea lanterns, together grouped in one place. But for now I think this is a pretty decent representation of all of the blocks we can expect to gather. Since it might be a little bit ridiculous to create a slice of the filter system for slabs, stairs, planks, walls, all of the different variants of blocks that we can end up getting. I've decided what I'm going to do is the same thing I did in Season 2 of the Survival Guide, and that's put a barrel above each double chest. Obviously, you can't put it directly above the double chest because then it's a full block above it and you can't open it, but having a barrel suspended above each chest for all of the different variants means that we could put the oak slabs and stairs and whatnot in there, the birch ones in there, and so on and so forth, creating manually sorted storage for all of the blocks that you can make out of these raw materials. But the majority of those are going to be things that we create on the fly, rather than things that we want to store in bulk. Like when it comes to mossy stone bricks, I tend to just grab some stone bricks and some moss and make as many as I need at the time when I start building with them. So there's no need to store them long term, or if there is, they can just go in the barrel above the stone bricks chest. Naturally, all of that is only a fraction of the items we can expect to collect in Minecraft. Like this is to say nothing of mob drops and other stuff that we would be acquiring in larger quantities. But designing this room, designing the plus shaped layout, of everything has left me with these fairly large, I think these are seven by seven square areas on the corners where naturally we couldn't build the item filters any closer together. They kind of have to sit on a diagonal like this for them to function properly. 
or we could maybe shuffle them in a little bit, but it would just interfere with the redstone. It'd be kind of a mess. So we've got these 7 by 7 areas, which could be, they could be functional. They could have additional storage here that's all manually sorted. They could just be decorative and aesthetic. They could even contain staircases that might lead us up to an upstairs floor where more storage could take place. Either way, there is room for expansion in this already pretty expansive idea for a storage build. The reason I'm not doing more on this today is, to be honest, that I'm running fairly low on certain resources. We're going to be getting a lot of stone out of this hillside anyway, but I'm actually running fairly low on natural stone that I need to make redstone comparators and repeaters. We don't, strictly speaking, need to build item filters for every chest here, since there's a decent chunk of them that will be empty for now, but I think we should probably do that anyway, just so the whole thing needs a lot less maintenance later. For now, I've got a lot of digging to do, so that's where I'm going to leave it for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you've enjoyed this look at automated storage. Hopefully now you understand a little bit more about how item filter circuits work and how you can use them in your world if you want to store large quantities of some of these items. But that's going to be it from me. Thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.